My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I am here with the latest in the gaming and tech world. A delicious joining of worlds, as it were. So, what do I have for you today? Well, we're going to kick things off with Asus, who may be potentially are working on a gaming smartphone. Then we're going to move on to the iPhone, as there is reports of saying that the iPhone X2 might have to heavily rely upon Samsung. And we also have a report that claims that the iPhone X might be discontinued this year. Then we're going to move on to Valve, who, after years of struggling, are most likely going to have to pony up $3 million to the Australian government. And then we're going to end things out with some positive news regarding God of War. But as I said, let's start things off with Asus. Now at the moment this is unconfirmed, but it at least was implied by the Asus CEO who basically said that they could be quote-unquote expected to release a phone designed for gaming. Now, the CEO, whose name is Jerry Shen, obviously wasn't talking in absolutes here. They weren't saying, yep, we're 100% releasing this thing, just that they could be expected to do so. And to be honest, it would kind of make sense for them to do this. I could see this fitting quite well. We could potentially have the ROG branding on it, or maybe not. Maybe it will have a separate branding to kind of keep it separate. But obviously, when you think ASUS, you probably think ROG or ROG. So it would make sense for it to have that branding on it. But the real question, of course, is what specs would it have? But considering this is just the comment from the CEO, it's impossible to know. You know, it might have a Snapdragon inside. It might not have a Snapdragon inside. Let's be real, the odds are it would have maybe the Snapdragon 845 or its successor, but again, it's impossible to know. Just take away from this that this is something that Asus are at least planning on doing, and it could be interesting to see what they bring to the table. But as I said, we're going to move on to the iPhone X2. So what's going on with the iPhone X2, I hear you ask? Well, this is all based on a report from the Wall Street Journal, which is basically saying that Apple are trying to diversify its reliance on Samsung, basically not rely hev as heavily on Samsung as a display manufacturer, and instead put more of that reliance upon LG, who they invested a hefty sum of $3 billion into. Now, if you weren't aware, Samsung did actually supply the technology for the screen tech in the iPhone X, but Apple wants to kind of take away the reliance upon Samsung and put, again, some of it on LG. But there seems to be something going wrong over at Camp LG as their production of OLED screens has hit a snag and looks like they aren't going to be able to meet the, let's be real, huge demand that Apple are going to have for their screens in the next line of iPhones. Because as I discussed just the other day, despite the fact that the iPhone X costs pretty much $1,000, it still managed to grab 35% of smartphone profits, which is not exactly small change, as I'm sure you would agree. So, further according to this report, Apple have ordered LG's display division to work on a third round of OLED prototypes. And if this pans out, a supply chain analyst has said that they could contribute as much as 20% of the OLED screens that go into new iPhones, with Samsung picking up the other 80%. So even with this happening, Samsung would still be you know propping up Apple a little bit here with their screen tech but obviously this is going to be a slow process you can they're, basically what they're trying to do as far as I understand it is move away from Samsung who are obviously their competitor so yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out the more interesting iPhone thing however is regarding the rumors surrounding the iPhone X continu discontinuation now before I even dive into this topic I just want to say that this is a rumor with flaming gold letters as this is based on some comments from Mirabald analyst Neil Campling. And he was talking to CNBC and basically saying that it's if his opinion that the iPhone X is going to be discontinued this year. And he said, quote, with the declines in iPhone X orders and the inventory issues at TSMC at record highs, which basically reflect a need to burn off inventory. Why? Because the iPhone X is dead. The simple problem with the X is that it's too expensive. Consumers are turning their backs on high priced smartphones. Now, what he's referring to here is that the fact that the record inventory levels over at TSMC are basically over what they should be. They actually have an oversupply of chips. This is according to, again, Mirabout Securities, and they have tracked their inventory data for TSMC. So, basically, he's saying that Apple are not buying components from them for future iPhone X models, suggesting that they are not planning on running this phone into the long term. 
So obviously it doesn't mean they're going to set fire to all the iPhone Xs, they're going to explode in your hand or anything like that, but it would basically mean that no new units would be manufactured and the iPhone Xs that are out there would be the stock that remains. Now again, this is purely his opinion. There are other analysts who are basically saying that the, the phone is going to be sold throughout 2019 and all this other stuff, so do keep that in mind, but it his comments do line up with what we've seen. We have seen Apple cutting their production targets for this particular iPhone. Obviously, I think his comments about the phone being too expensive are very, very true. That It's almost a $1,000, as I already said. So I wouldn't be surprised if Apple has pushed the price thing too far and they have seen less sales than they'd like. Now, as I just literally mentioned like maybe a couple of minutes ago, they still made an obscene amount of money, but... They kind of want to go into the long term, and obviously, this talk on you still got to think about how much it costs to research and develop to actually manufacture this thing, to employ everyone, all that sort of stuff. So, I'm not saying they didn't make a profit on it because they undoubtedly have, but they're kind of thinking like, okay, this is way under what we expected. You know, Apple are not going to be just looking at like the dollar signs; they're also going to be like, okay, long big picture and all that stuff. But we have a few items to discuss, so let's move on to Valve. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, this has been going on since 2014, but the story first surfaced back in December of last year because Valve basically appealed a decision made by the Australian Federal Court in a decision, sorry, in a case between the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission and Valve itself. So basically, this dates back to before the refund policy was put into place on Steam. And Australian consumers were complaining that they're not able to get refunds on their games, and that's not allowed under con Australian consumer law. And it's their law states, quote, all consumer goods or services come with automatic consumer guarantees that they are not of acceptable quality and fit for purpose for which they are sold. If they are not, consumers have a right to a remedy, which may include refund, repair or replacement in certain circumstances. These consumer rights cannot be excluded, rect restricted, excuse me, or modified. So basically, this is the ruling that Valve have been trying to appeal. There have been multiple appeals against the decision made by the Australian High Court. Now, they have appealed once again against the fine issued by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, which, by the way, is $3 million, but that has been dismissed. Now, the fine was first issued in 2016, which is when, again, it was first issued. The case has been going on since 2014, as I already said. But basically, the ACCC said that the refund policy that they had at the time was valid under consumer law and that Valve had, quote, engaged in misleading or deceptive conduct and made false or misleading representations to Australian customers. Valve had basically argued against the fine, saying that because they don't actually have an office in Australia, they don't have a physical presence there, the law should not apply to the digital marketplace. So they've appealed and appealed and appealed, but now it has been thrown out. And I have a statement here from the ACCC Commissioner Sarah Court, who said, quote, this important precedent confirms the ACCC's view that overseas based companies selling to Australian consumers must abide by our laws. So Valve also tried to get a special leave application, which basically means that long and short, long and short of it is Valve are bound to Australian laws when selling to Australian customers. And this decision, as far as we can tell, is final. Valve are out of appeals and legal options, so it looks like they're going to have to cough up. Now, Valve make pretty much all the money in the world, so they're not really going to have an issue paying this fine, but it could set interesting precedents elsewhere in the world. Now, obviously, they do have a refund policy now, but you can still argue that it's not brilliant, but it's it's better than not having one at all, which is what we had the situation we had previously. But it is so interesting, and uh, I am curious to see if there's going to be any ripples from this. But let's move on to our final item for today, which, as I said, is going to be God of War. Now, the game just released today. I've got my copy in the post. Can't wait to install it and play it. It's going to be awesome. But... According to MPD analyst Matt Piscatella, God of War is on track to be one of the biggest launches ever for a PS4 exclusive, or more specifically, the biggest exclusive debut. And Matt Piscatella said he had, quote, high confidence that God of War would do very, very well for itself. And he made a tweet which reads, quote, so my confidence is high that God of War will be the biggest exclusive debut on the PS4. Only question I have left is how high is the sky for a primarily story-driven non-service game? Haven't seen a game like this highly this rated this highly in years. This will set a benchmark. Now you might wonder, okay, what does he mean? Well, 
just based on the facts, the biggest launch sales this generation have been games like Destiny, The Division, and stuff like that. Games with a heavy multiplayer element, or obviously focus, in both of these cases. And obviously, microtransactions, or some sort of loot crate system, or something like that. You know, Even if that's not exact, they have some system built within the game. That's not obviously the case with God of War at all. This is a single player experience, just play it, boom. Now, I think a lot of people are going to replay this game. I mean, when I didn't have many games, I replayed almost single-player games so many times. I can probably tell you the story of Prince of Persia Sands of Time without looking at a wiki page. But I think he underestimates the replay value of a game like that because just replaying and re-enjoying that experience is special, even if it's not as special as the first time. I can't count the amount of times I've played Silent Hill 2, for example. So, obviously, it's not going to make as much money in terms of the long term, but we've still got DLC and all that sort of stuff. And... Even if it does just really, really well around the few months after release and it has a sort of long tail after that and then there's a DLC release and that reinvigorates things, I still think God of War is going to do really, really well because the scores have been insane. I haven't played it yet myself, as I already said, so there's going to be an early look at video probably in the next couple of days, so do keep your eyes peeled for that, but got to play it. Got to play it. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Let me know your thoughts on everything I've discussed today. Your opinions are, of course, important. You've heard me talk for almost 15 minutes, so uh, only fair that I give you a soapbox to stand on, my good friends. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.